For all who are watching this video, be sure to secure a copy of the Total Wall Applicator Training Manual on Class MD Moisture Drainable Eaves. We highly recommend that you read this manual and keep it handy as a reference guide. If you are considering installing EFs for the first time, we recommend that you work with an experienced applicator crew to gain some hands-on experience. Additionally, for your first project, start with a small area on a low profile structure, such as a shed or a garage, to gain experience and familiarity with both the tools and the products. The Total Wall exterior insulated and finished system can be installed over a variety of substrates. Your first step is to inspect the substrate. Approved substrates are plywood, oriented strand board, also called OSB, exterior grade gypsum sheathing, glass mat faced siliconized core gypsum sheathing, often referred to as Dens glass, and there are other brands of the same type, cement board, brick, block, concrete, or stucco masonry, and other substrates as approved in writing by Total Wall. The substrate must be inspected to ensure it is in good condition. It must be sound and firm and level to within one quarter inch in eight lineal feet. Sheathings must be properly fastened and properly aligned. If the substrate does not meet specifications, you should bring it to the intention of the general contractor, the owner, manager, or architect. Do not proceed until it is corrected. Once the substrate is inspected and approved, you will mark the location of expansion joints that will occur in the eaves. Expansion joints are installed over existing expansion joints in the wall, where two different types of substrates abut, at floor lines in wood frame construction, and to limit runs of eaves to approximately 100 linear feet. Remember that sealant joints, called isolation joints, will be installed around all windows, doors, and utility penetrations. Does the project call for aesthetic reveals? An aesthetic reveal is a straight horizontal or vertical groove that is cut into the outer surface of the EPS foam layer before it receives base coat and mesh. A router or hot knife tool and straight edge is used to cut a V-shaped or U-shaped groove in the foam. So add these items to your tool list if reveals are specified and make note of their desired locations. Aesthetic reveals cannot be installed unless the foam thickness is at least one and one half inches. Remember that the base of the aesthetic groove, the EPS foam thickness cannot be less than three quarters of an inch. Horizontal reveals must be rounded or beveled so that water cannot collect in them. Next, look for the presence of window head flashings and roof wall diverter flashings called kickout flashing. One of the most critical parts of the system is the installation of flashings. Flashings occur at window heads and at deck ledger boards, for example. This is a particular type of L flashing. This flashing has a drip edge. This is the bottom plate and this will rest right on the deck ledger board or on the window head. It's fastened through the top flange and if a moisture barrier is present, it will lap over this top leg. The other type of flashing that's very important is the kickout diverter flashing. This is installed at the bottom of a run of roof that interfaces a wall. It's inserted behind step flashing 
And when water runs down a wall, it will kick the uh, water away from the wall. This flashing comes in both right hand and left hand designs so that it can be used, for example, on either side of a chimney going up and interfacing a roof. There's one thing that we do want to show too uh, that's very important in, a, in an EFAS or a stucco type system. That is the flashings. The flashings need to be in place. Consistency at roof lines, at any type of windows, heads of windows, or anywhere that that dissimilar material comes into play. This particular flashing is called a kickout flashing. And where this is, where another roof or a wall comes off of this particular wall, a roof line comes out here with the step flashing out with the shingles on here and then a kick out flashing at this point. What this does is allows the water to come down off of the shingles, hit this kick out flashing, drain away from the wall rather than going back behind the stucco area. Notice too on a roof line area or a dissimilar, a dissimilar material area, what we do is we hold the bottom or the drip flashing or the stop up off of that area. This allows moisture to come in and dry out at particular times. Also, if the building has a deck, check to see if flashing is installed on the ledger board. If these flashings are not present, they must be installed for the eaves to be weatherproof. The actual installation of eaves requires specific tools and equipment to mix and apply the materials. When applying total wall finish, a stainless steel trowel is required. For floating most finishes, the best float to use is a plastic float. There are two approved notch trowel patterns. The first one is a half inch by half inch notch spaced two inches apart. The second one is a 3 8 inch by half inch deep notch spaced one and a half inches apart. It is these notches or grooves applied vertically that create the ribbons of adhesive and the drainage plane that runs down in between the ribbons of adhesive. So we get the bonding of the foam and the drainage plane formed at the same time by using the appropriate notch trowel. For cutting expanded polystyrene rigid insulation board, it's possible to use a razor knife. New blades and a razor knife work very well. An alternative method is to use a hot knife. Hot knives are available from many of the EFS supply ma manufacturers, such as Windlock, Demand, or Warehouse Bay. And a straight blade would work best, and it simply heats up by pulling the trigger, slices through the foam, and makes a perfect cut with a smooth edge. If during the process you need to use a straight edge, be sure not to use metal or a material that will melt. A non-conductive material uh, such as wood makes the best type of straight edge or guide for cutting the foam. Accessibility to all wall areas being clad, which may require lifts or staging, and sufficient trained manpower to prepare and apply the system in a continuous manner. Be sure you are ordering the correct EFS materials in the proper quantities. If you are uncertain, please call Total Wall and ask for assistance. To determine the quantity of material to order, measure the square footage of the walls to be covered and calculate the amount of each material needed based on the unit coverage of that material. At a minimum, you will need the following materials. One, moisture barrier, either the sheet applied or liquid total stop RA. 
Two, PVC starter track with weep holes. The drainage starter track is typically a PVC material that is installed at the lower termination of the eaves. The insulation board sits in the drainage track. The drainage track has weep holes in the bottom to allow moisture to come out. And many of the drainage tracks have a front lip that's perforated to accept the base coat and reinforcing mesh. The drainage tracks with the front lip will come in different widths to accommodate different thicknesses of EPS foam. The back leg of the drainage track is pre-drilled to accept fasteners to attach it to the substrate. There is one alternative type of acceptable drainage track called the universal drainage track. This is available from Windlock. It has a unique design that will accept any thickness of foam and the base coat and mesh will wrap under this front ledge and back behind. Three, waterproof peel and stick tape. A peel and stick waterproofing tape is used at system terminations and at penetrations, such as around windows. Approved brands are FortiFlash and Protecto Wrap. The paper backing is peeled to reveal a very sticky bituminous coating, and this tape then is pressed onto the wall to seal the area. Four, an attachment method. Either mechanical fasteners for going over the sheet applied moisture barrier, or total wall base coat adhesive for the liquid total stop RA barrier. Five, EPS rigid foam board. Minimum one inch thickness for the fasten system and minimum three quarter inch thickness for the adhered system. Both systems have a maximum four inch thickness. This limit does not apply to architectural trim pieces. Six, total wall standard reinforcing mesh and total wall standard detail mesh. Seven, total wall base coat. Eight, total wall textured finish coat. Nine, an approved caulk sealant and backer rod to treat the expansion joints and isolation joints. The approved caulk sealant list is available in the total wall literature. All products should be stored under cover and all liquid products should be protected from freezing. The exterior insulation and finish system components are available from total wall. It is important that all these components be sourced from the same manufacturer, Total Wall. Before beginning the installation, product windows, fixtures, plants, and adjacent surfaces must be protected from spatters and drips of product during application. Your final step is to check the weather. Schedule your work to avoid being in direct sunlight on hot days. Do not install products to a frozen wall or if the temperature is not at least 40 degrees Fahrenheit and rising. Do not install products if precipitation is forecast within eight hours. 